The story of the day is about a group who wore their hearts on their sleeves. For over 60 years, this group had wowed their audience with their sweet melodies, spot on harmonies, and silk stage present. Today is a story about none other than the Chicago Fighters, the Shot Lights. Since you made it this far, go ahead and leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay updated with the channel. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. The story begins in 1959 on the south side of Chicago, Illinois. Eugene Record, a fantastic singer and member of the local band called the Chanteurs, and Marshall Thompson, on the other hand, is a musical talent that can't be described, also a member of another group called the Deserados. During this time, being part of a group was the best way to make it into the industry, but you also had to make a name for yourself. Most would sing on the streets or on local talent shows. At these shows, Wrecker and Thompson groups would frequently battle each other. They liked what each other brought to the table. One group could dance their tails off while the other could sing until you cried. They decided to leave their respective groups and form their own. Eugene Wrecker, Robert Lexter, Clarence Johnson from the Sean Tours, as well as Brad Jones and Marcel Thompson from the Deserados. They would refer themselves as the highlights. Soprano, if you didn't want to be bothered. And we used to sing on these talent shows. So we went, we won a talent show that was singing against Marshall's group. Now their group were dancers. They could dance. We couldn't dance that good. We sang. Hey, could you teach us how to dance? And we used to tell them, could you teach us how to sing? <laughs> They later discovered that another group was using their name. They would rebrand themselves and rename the group Marshall and the Shotlights to represent their origins. Throughout the early years, the band released numerous of records of various of local record labels. Johnson, he would leave the band to concentrate on producing records. Now that the band was hungry for success, they would work jobs during the day and perform locally at night. They would perform at every gig they can to get pennies on the dollar, but at that time, this was millions to the group members. It was a dream, and they was getting paid for it. This would go on for about 10 years until the group would land a tryout with Bunchwick record producer Carl Davis in 1968. The band would lay down pipes and take off with their first major record label song. This song would be the first group charted single, and this song was Give It Away. This song peaked at number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 10 on the Billboard R&B charts. The label would capitalize on the popularity of the single and name the album under the same name. This album will reach 180 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and the number 16 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. The album will produce four hit singles with the entitled song, Let Me Be The Man My Daddy Was, this song peaked at number 94 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 15 on the Billboard R&B charts. The 12th of Never that peaked at number 122 on the Billboard Bubbling Under the Hot 100 charts and number 47 on the R&B charts. 24 Hours of Sadness that peaked at number 119 on the Bubbling Under the Hot 100 charts and number 30 on the Billboard R&B charts. The group's second album, I Like Your Loving, Do You Like Mines was released in December of 1970. With the title song reaching number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 11 on the Billboard R&B charts. This album had produced two hit singles with Are You My Woman. Now this song reached number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 8 on the Billboard R&B charts. The group made their first television appearance on the Chicago-based show Soul Train. In July of 1971, the group's third album was released titled For God's Sake, Give Me More Power to the People. This album reached number 12 on the Billboard Top LP charts and number 3 on the Billboard Top Souls LP charts. This album produced four charted singles with the title song that peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 4 on the Billboard R&B charts. We Are Neighbors that peaked at number 70 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 17 on the Billboard R&B charts. I Want to Pay You Back that peaked at number 95 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 35 on the Billboard R&B charts and Have You Seen Her 
This song will peak at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number one on the Billboard R&B charts. Now, record, he would write the songs for the group and you could feel everything that he felt. He would write these songs based on his relationships with his ex-wife, fellow labor mate, Barbara Ackland, and Chess Record secretary, Jackie Sutton. Now, while Record handled the songs, Thompson, he handled the group's business. The group, that was a perfect complement to one another. Record, he would write the song, Oh Girl, to express his feelings for his then girlfriend, Jackie Sutton. The group, they didn't like the song because they thought it was too pop, but who will know that this is exactly what the group needed? This song will peak that number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number one on the Billboard R&B charts. And during this time, if you go number one on the pop charts, the world was yours. In April of 1972, the group's fourth album was released titled A Lonely Man. This album reached number five on the Billboard Top LP charts and number one on the Billboard Top Soul LP charts. This album produced four hit singles with Old Girl and The Coldest Days of My Life, which peaked at number 47 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number eight on the Billboard R&B charts. The title song that peaked at number 57 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 25 on the Billboard R&B charts. And lastly, The Man and the Woman that peaked at number 57 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. The group, they will go on to release four more albums on the Blunch Rick Records. The first of which was A Letter to Myself, which peaked at number 50 on the Billboard Top LP charts and number 4 on the Billboard Top Souls LP charts. A self-entitled album that peaked at number 89 on the Billboard Top LP charts and number 3 on the Billboard Top Souls LPs. Toby, that peaked at number 18 on the Billboard Top LP charts and number 12 on the Billboard Top Soul LP charts and Half of Love that peaked at number 41 on the Billboard Top Souls LP charts. Jones began doing Angel Dust around this time and this really had a huge negative impact on his own stage performance and as a result, the group, they started to hurt as a whole. So in 1973, the group would ask Jones to step down, but they always had an open spot for him, but when he improved. With Jones gone, the group had reached its first breaking point, and they would soon reach their second and third. As stated in the Jackie Wilson story, Bunchrick, they failed to pay many of their artists taxes, resulting in many of their artists, including Jackie Wilson and the Shotlights, facing some serious time in prison. After this record, he would leave the group and sign a solo deal with Warner Records. The group, they were signed a deal with Mercury Records. Record and the group's albums with their new labels did not fare well at all. And Jones, he was replaced by Stanley Anderson, who was quickly replaced by Riley Kingsley, who was then replaced by Doc Robertson. Record and the group was nothing without each other. So a call was placed to Record, who stated that he would only return if the original members returned, which they did. The group was dealing with their own issues, especially around this time. Blunt's Red, they really broke the group. In 1988, Record, he would lead the group again and he would turn to gospel music. Frank Reed, he would take over for Record, but then later that year, he was replaced by Anthony Watson, who took over. Throughout the next decade, the group lead singers will rotate between Watson and Reed. In 1997, the group that was involved in a terrible accident with Reed and Thompson's wife was thrown for the miracle. Connie Thompson, she would die as a result of her injuries and Reed would have to get a metal plate put in his back. Jones and Record, they would both leave the group around the same time and Jones would relocate down south and it was later discovered that he was homeless. Now the band is still touring today but with new members. Fred Simon, he joined in 2010. Mac Miller, he joined in 2014. Warren Tempted, he joined in 2018, and Marshall's wife, Tara Thompson, she joined in 2003. The group's song, Are You My Woman, was sampled by Beyonce for her debut album. This song was Crazy In Love. That same year, Jay-Z sampled another song for the group for his Black album. Now, the group was inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Foundation in 2000 and in the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2005, as well as the R&B Music Group Hall of Fame. The Shy Lights was honored 
with the Hollywood Walk of Fame star on September 30th, 2021. Now, the shot lights was as important to Chicago as the Temptations was as important to Detroit. Marcel Thompson, he is Chicago's Otis Williams. With all the hits that the shot lights produced, I believe it's long overdue for them to get an induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 